So as 2023 is quickly coming to a close, we have to talk about the worst gaming moments of 2023 because honestly, there was a lot of nonsense that happened in the video game industry this year that I feel like venting about maybe for the first time or maybe once again. Will I make a video talking about the best moments? I mean, positivity doesn't really sell. People prefer negativity, but who knows if this video does well, I might. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Without any further ado, I have selected 10 different instances of the worst of gaming in 2023. First off, we're going to talk about one of the stupidest things I ever played, something that nobody asked for, nobody liked the first game, nobody wanted a sequel, yet Nintendo thought, hey, let's make a sequel, and that is Everybody 1-2 Switch. Now, I played this game with Josie and Nate and Spawnwave over on the Spawncast Network Patreon. Make sure you guys check that out if you have not yet, because John isn't paying us otherwise. That's the only way we get money off the Spawncast. Oops, did I spill the beans? Go to hell, John. But yeah, th this, this, this was terrible. This was terrible. It wasn't fun. I wasn't having a good time. The mini games didn't make much sense. But the one thing that everybody One Two Switch had going for it was it was not a full priced game. It was something that I feel like Nintendo thought, you know, it's essentially now or never. It's going to sit there forever. And if we don't release it now, kind of during a lull period where we have some big stuff that just happened and big stuff coming up, such as The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom came out a little bit before it. And then, of course, after you had Super Mario Brothers Wonder, it just kind of faded into obscurity. Many people thought that this game was going to be a highly sought after physical copy until they realized that, well, nobody was buying it. So places were just selling it for like 20 bucks. I don't know if it's any better when you're playing in person, but regardless of the situation, there are better party games to play. And Nintendo needs to learn a lesson when it comes to the everybody 1-2 Switch or the 1-2 Switch franchise. Nobody wants it. Nobody liked it at first. The only reason it sold at first was because it was a launch game with the Nintendo Switch. And it was that and Zelda and Bomberman. So of course people are going to pick it up. Bro, they hacked Insomniac Games. They got Wolverine footage flying around the internet now. You don't think they'll hack you too? You better get Surfshark VPN, pal. The internet is getting crazier by the day with hacks of private information, so give yourself the ultimate holiday gift this year with Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is a highly trusted and used VPN service that works in protecting you online with the click of a button. It's literally so easy even an idiot like me can do it. Beyond just internet protection, Surfshark VPN allows you to do things like access region locked content on places like Netflix and YouTube, which gives you more bang for your buck, and honestly so much more. And don't call me Kringle, but right now you can get an exclusive Surfshark VPN holiday season deal. Enter the promo code RGT to get up to six additional months for free at surfshark.deal slash RGT, or check out the link in the description box down below. Protect yourself this holiday season and beyond, get Surfshark VPN, and don't end up like Insomniac Games. Huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. The next game on my list may come as a surprise to you guys, because initially, I was pretty positive about the game. I made a video about it, talking about it, but if you watched that video, you would know one thing. I was kind of hard on the game for certain aspects, and a lot of it was kind of contingent on the post-launch content of the game. I understood that this wasn't a behemoth of a franchise or anything like that, and it was had a good groundwork, but it was about, you know, building upon that groundwork to make it great again, and they, they really messed up this post-launch content. I, of course, am talking about AEW Fight Forever. I still think the core gameplay is super fun. I think some things need to be adjusted in the core gameplay, such as, you know, being able to kick out of a single finisher or a single signature move or something like that. It's very easy to get defeated in the game, which doesn't really make much sense when you're playing it online. But I assumed that things would get better. I assumed that things like Create a Wrestler would be, you know, constantly updated and added in with new things. I assumed that the upcoming DLC would come out in a timely manner and they would probably reward the audience for supporting the game on day one and then they were like you know what i got a better idea let's do the complete opposite 
let's just upcharge people on this upcoming DLC. We'll do some little weird things with, uh, you know, some of the uh, creator wrestler stuff and whatnot, but we're not really going to give people what they want. And, like, where are the game modes? Why is there still no Steel Cage game mode? I could play Steel Cage matches on WWF Warzone on the N64. I could play Steel Cage matches on WWF Steel Cage Challenge on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Just the lack of modes, the lack of anything to do once you kind of go through the being the elite mode, it just really left a sour taste in my mouth. I was definitely very initially high on the game, but like WWE 2K23, it's honestly a better game. The gameplay might not be exactly how I want it to be, and it might be more akin to something different than the original Aki engine, but it's still a better experience in terms of what you can do and what you can create, and the customization levels are unparalleled. AEW Fight Forever definitely you know, kind of just rested on its name. It rested on its laurels, I feel. And I still feel like the core gameplay is super fun, but they completely dropped the ball with it. Call of Duty. Every year, Call of Duty comes out. Every year, people buy it. And every year, people say, why did I buy this? I'm not talking about the multiplayer aspect because the multiplayer aspect is the multiplayer aspect. I usually prefer the Warzone style stuff, the Battle Royale stuff, because I think that's a bit different than what we get with traditional Call of Duty maps as far as your traditional single or uh, multiplayer is concerned. But when it comes to the single player of this game, I never really played many Call of Duty single player experiences. And people always told me that I was missing out on stuff. I played like Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2, the original ones back in the day. And then I sampled some of these single player campaigns. But I decided to play through Modern Warfare 3's campaign, the 2023 edition, because it came out before the multiplayer and all that sort of stuff. I got a review code and holy shit, man, this was terrible. It was so cliche. Call of Duty still is one of the most stagnant things in the world. Nothing is really interactive with you, which just really takes you out of the game itself. Like, yes, there are predetermined things within the levels that you can kind of shoot and stuff, but like stuff should be flying all over the place. I used to play Battlefield Bad Company 2 on the Xbox 360. I could demolish a whole building if I wanted to, yet in Call of Duty, it's just like a over-the-top Michael Bay action film. The ending was absolutely atrocious. The gameplay, or the game itself, took me three and a half hours to go through, and they really, really tried to recreate No Russian once again, and just went in the most ridiculous sort of manner, taking the same principles of it, but stripping away the human element of it and the surprise element of it, because everyone's expecting something stupid to be in these games. Call of Duty needs to go get back to the drawing board, but the problem is, it still sells, and because it still sells, people are still buying it, and they're still making a ton of money. But Modern Warfare 3, man, that single-player campaign was just absolute garbage. Next up, we're going to talk about the Nintendo Switch eShop. I have a lot of beef with the Nintendo Switch eShop because... Like it sucks, man. Like it, they never really made it much better. They added a few different categories and stuff like that. But navigating this thing is extremely painful. It's extremely slow. You know, trying to find something new in like an organic manner is damn near impossible. But that's not what I'm going to focus on in this. What I'm going to focus on in this is all of these godforsaken hentai games. Okay, if if that's your cup of tea, if that's how you get your rocks off and your jollies off, like. That's something, you know, I'm not going to say that's good. I'm going to say that's something, but at least you are identifying what you like. But for the rest of people, we don't really want to see that sort of stuff. Like we don't, I, I don't need to see weird, furry sex puzzles. I don't need to see, you know, uh, uh, life, uh, you know, furry girlfriend simulators or animated girlfriend simulators. Like with the amount of money that you have spent on this game, you could like go to a shake junt. And then, like, you'll see everything right in front of you. And if you're, a, you know, a decent-looking guy and you tip them a little bit, maybe you can even touch them. Like, you're creating jobs with that. You're helping out potentially single mothers and stuff. With this, like, who are you helping out? And who is buying these games to the point of where they keep making them? I'll probably get in trouble for this segment, but you know what? It needs to be said. There's enough, there's enough hentai stuff on the Switch eShop. We're good. All right, we're tapped out. We're at full capacity. No more. No more. Another disappointing game in 2023 was definitely Redfall. 
Now, Redfall has been fixed since I played it. Redfall, they went in, they put the 60 frames per second patch into the game, all this sort of stuff. They added in a bunch of content, but I was not lucky enough to play Redfall during that time frame. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, they, them. I decided to play Redfall pretty much on day one with Modern Vintage Gamer, Nate the Hate, and Spawn Wave. And we ran through this game, took us about 11 or so hours, and wow just generic generic buggy felt like a game from the previous generation nothing to really push the xbox series x to its limits we all played on the series x just a, a, a mishmash game with glitches that constantly happen you would try to finish a mission and you would complete the objectives that you needed to finish the mission and then for some reason the game just didn't really identify that as you doing it so you had to restart missions over and over again i think the core idea wasn't necessarily bad but the execution was just absolutely terrible and the performance was just unacceptable for a current generation game it's a shame though because i honestly feel like there were some interesting set pieces in the game like when you would go into those other realms and stuff like that kind of like an Alice in Wonderland sort of motif but like just the core gameplay itself being so buggy and so glitchy it really made for like no sort of real enjoyment there were times where bosses would just sit there and become sp bullet sponges and just let us shoot them over and over again without moving or trying to defend themselves it was just you know it, it was it was such a shame for xbox owners because this was supposed to be one of the big games this was supposed to be one of their crowning achievements for 2023 and instead it ended up releasing Releasing in an absolutely buggy broken mess but my dumb ass still played it all the way through but Redfall it's allegedly been fixed it's not worth me going back to though so that's why it's on this list next up we have to talk about PlayStation because they really haven't caught any bullets in this video but now it's time to go right to their heart because we this year to some degree saw PlayStation absolutely implode upon themselves completely shift uh, directions sort of shift their focus all sorts of stuff first off Jim Ryan decides to leave I was not a big Jim Ryan fan but he decided to jump ship we of course got the PlayStation VR 2 that came and went like a wet fart like I bought a PSVR 2 on day one I played it for the first week I checked out things like Gran Turismo 7 which was the, by far the best experience on there but what else is there it's like Sony released this thing and then they were like oh damn we got to make games for this we actually have to put we have to put content on this thing who's making games for this are you because we're sure as hell not like where are the fun experiences it seems like the playstation vr1 was supported much much more than the playstation vr2 and then of course we have the whole games as a service thing we're doing all these games as a service this is the future oh wait no just kidding oh you've been waiting for the last of us part two factions like a lot of people have because factions one was awesome well we're still working on it don't worry here's some artwork oh wait just kidding we're not doing that what's ended up happening because of all this is you're starting to see like cracks in sony's foundation for like the next year or two because of leaks and things like that we learned that games like wolverine are not coming out until 2026 really for 2024 we know about hell divers and you know hell divers 2 that's it's not really my cup of tea we of course have the last of us part 2 remaster because you know that was needed and then it's all third party games on the system which don't get me wrong it's great that there's those third party games because without those what does sony really have going on in 2024 we know kind of their timeline for things and unless it's a smaller project that just hasn't been announced yet that has a quick turnaround time i can't imagine there are many things in the pipeline for sony to release in 2024 it's just a weird strange situation where it's like they bet on the wrong horse but like right before the horse got to the stable to get into the race they were like wait we realized we made a mistake here we need to walk all of this back 
it's just, you know, with, with Bungie, the whole Bungie situation as well, like, it's a mess at PlayStation right now. They're still selling systems, they're still selling games, and they still are having some good releases, but most of these releases coming in 2024 are not going to be from them. Will that be enough to keep the hype levels of the PlayStation 5 high and continue to sell well? I guess time will tell, but it just looks like, at least as of right now, Sony's 2024 is probably going to be a lot quieter than a lot of people would have expected it to have been monkeys i'm a fan of monkeys apes primates chimpanzees um you know all that stuff they're funny orangutans they're funny monkeys are funny you watch a monkey they'll probably do something funny r.i.p harambe well with that being said one of my most disappointing moments of 2023 and i shouldn't have done this to myself you know i, I really i did this to myself I created this narrative. I created this 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 idea that maybe, just maybe, this King Kong game was going to be good. Skull Island: Rise of Kong. You, my friend, can burn in the fiery pits of hell. Whoever, whoever decided that this was the move, and I know that there was a story that came out about a short development time for the game, which makes absolutely no sense because you're not coinciding with a movie. You're not coinciding with a new TV show. There's absolutely no reason to rush this game out the door. But you decided to make this horrible game with King Kong. Has King Kong you know, been one of the most disrespected characters in franchise history? How hard is it to make a good King Kong game? First and foremost, we saw one. King Kong that came out, or Peter Jackson's King Kong, that was based on the Peter Jackson film. Why well, it's called Peter Jackson's King Kong. But, like, that was a good game. It was even better on the Xbox 360, one of the visual showcases for the system. And then just like ever since then, people were like, well, how do we make a King Kong game? Oh, well, I don't know. It's like, Christ, you have a giant monkey who goes around destroying the forest and beating up these big characters. And then he gets like captured. And then he goes into New York City. And then like he, he messes up New York City. Like I could write a game with this. You start out the game. You're in the jungle. You're tearing up the jungle. Pseudo open world. You basically grow up as Kong. And then you take on these ferocious monsters that are also on the island as well with you. Then when you beat a certain monster, in comes the human element of it. The humans then end up capturing you and bringing you over to New York City. And now you're in a sandbox New York City absolutely wrecking the city. It's not a hard concept. But for whatever reason, there's not been any good King Kong games lately. And Kong Skull Island, Rise of Kong Skull Island, Skull Island, Rise of Kong, you could burn in hell. No, we're not done yet. I got more things to complain about, pal. Next up, we're talking about the current Nintendo Switch port problem. I know what you're saying yourself, well, RGT. What exactly are you talking about with this? Well, we are now seeing the age of the release it now, fix it later Nintendo Switch ports. Now, this is something that's been around for a while, but in my opinion, it hasn't really been at the forefront of things. You know, it was more of just isolated incidences, but we're seeing more and more games release on the Nintendo Switch, and the day one version isn't the same as the day 30 version, and it's substantially better. So to that, I have to say, why the hell did you release the Switch version? Two games that come to mind are games like Mortal Kombat 1. Now, Mortal Kombat 1 was a game that I bought on day one, and I had fun with it, but it definitely had problems like I showcased in my video. But then we've gotten subsequent patches for this game, and it's a hell of a lot better. It looks a lot better. It runs a lot better. It's faster in terms of load times and stuff like that. Textures actually load in instead of just being in a weird sort of hypocritical state of just, you know, nonsense. Like, I don't understand why they couldn't just be like, hey, we need a little more additional time with the Nintendo Switch version of this game. It's not like Mortal Kombat 1 is going to set the world on fire with the Nintendo Switch sales as far as software is concerned, because people don't really buy third-party games quite like that. I do understand that Mortal Kombat 11 did sell well on the Switch, and I also bought that on there, but it was kind of different. The Switch was still new. The Switch was still unique enough to, you know, garnish interest in these ports. Now that we're at the tail end of the system, life cycle it just seems a bit unnecessary and we're seeing the same thing with the batman arkham trilogy on the nintendo switch like i said in my video arkham city great arkham asylum good rough around the edges arkham knight unplayable but we have gotten an update already 
for Arkham Asylum. Yes, the one game that I said was, was good, but a little rough around the edges. Now it's better. They've already improved upon it with a subsequent patch. They've said that subsequent patches are coming to Arkham City and Arkham Knight as well. So they're not giving up necessarily on this game. But once again, what was the point in rushing this game out? Like there's not a new Batman flick coming out or anything like that. There's not a new Batman TV show. Why do we put so much emphasis on an arbitrary release date that we or you as a company have set they actually delayed batman arkham trilogy one time by a few weeks so like why not just do it again like i don't understand it and i understand that you're saying well rgt you would be upset if you know they did delay those versions of the game but i feel like it's better to experience a great experience on day one than to get a shoddy experience on day one and hope that people want to stick around for it. We've seen subsequent updates to Metal Gear Solid, uh, the uh, games, the Metal Gear Master Collection as well. They've added in new filters into the game, which was something I said should have been in the PlayStation 1 stuff. I just don't understand this mentality of, you know, the day one product isn't necessarily indicative of a finished product. It's more like 85% of it. Like, and it's just more obvious on the Switch than it is on other platforms. I understand the Switch is kind of reaching the end of its life cycle. I understand that a lot of these developers are tapping out the power of the system. But, like, you got to respect your audience. You have to respect your audience. All right, next up, I'm going to keep this one short and sweet because I just made a video about it. But Pokemon and Nintendo lying to you. Go watch that video because I cover all of this, but they lie to you. They lied to you, they lied to you, they lied to you. They said they would fix things and they didn't fix things. At least these other companies end up fixing it. It is absolutely astounding to me that Mortal Kombat 1 has gotten a substantial update for the Nintendo Switch version, which is a multi-platform game, yet Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet have not. In a year, it took Mortal Kombat like a month or two to get that out the door. The fact that Nintendo and the Pokemon company just expect you to forget about this and buy the DLC for the new game because here's the DLC and the DLC still runs like shit as well. It's just this disrespectful. They're not, you know, they're not focused on their audience. They are focused on the money and they don't care as long as the game sells, which has sold over 25 million copies already. They have no reason to fix it. You have to vote with your wallet sending a mean tweet isn't going to get the job done but if you kind of get your message out there and you make other people realize hey you know this actually is a problem then maybe something can be done or maybe not and pokemon will just continue to sell but they lied to you they lied to you and the final biggest gaming disappointment of 2023 once again is something that just happened pretty recently but I think is the most egregious because this doesn't just impact Nintendo. This just doesn't impact PlayStation or Xbox. It honestly impacts the whole gaming industry and just how we consume coverage and how we're expected to handle situations because this whole Insomniac leak and the handling of it by many prominent video game, you know, either websites or podcasts or stuff like that. It really showed biases within this industry. And it really makes people question, you know, where are these loyalties lying? Are we starting to see, you know, people who are essentially shill channels trying to come across as constructive criticism channels, you know? I think it really showed just a different side of things because, you know, Insomniac was where we drew the line. Even though some of these people were in Insomniac games, even though some of these people work with Insomniac. But no, Insomniac is where we draw the line because, well, we can latch on to the personal information stuff. Even though the Capcom leak had over a thousand people's personal information out there. Grand Theft Auto 5 source code just leaked and you don't hear anyone coming out talking about that situation because of the fact that there's just this weird dichotomy happening now nobody's speaking out that you shouldn't talk about this and trying to vilify people who did speak about these leaks everyone likes to go back to that personal information thing yet everyone was in agreement that the personal information was off limits nobody talked about the personal information because nobody gives a shit they don't care about that they care about the video game stuff and if the information is out there it's not a bad thing to talk about it we all agree that it was done by an 
nefarious means. But every leak is done by nefarious means. It's not like these companies just mess up and get all their information out there. There's been so many leaks done by ransomware groups and just hacking groups in general when it comes to the video game industry. Yet we were all fine with those leaks. It was all okay. But when it comes to Insomniac, because some of you people are friends with them, that's where we draw the hard line. That's where we put our line in the sand. And now you're against us. Now you're a bad person. To that I say, that's ridiculous. You need to check your priorities and where your priorities lie instead of trying to come off as an unbiased individual because your bias is showing and I'm not buying it, pal. Alrighty. So those were the worst gaming moments of 2023. I feel like I did a good job covering this. I'm kind of surprised that this video is is so long. Um, but yeah, I guess I had a lot of things to say. You know, this is an industry that for better or worse, depending on who you ask, I am involved in it, man. And I do feel strongly about the good things and I feel strongly about the bad things. And, you know, the bad things are what gets the clicks. The bad things are what gets people, you know, interested in things. So this is my opinion, though, man. If you disagree with all of these things and you think everything is great, then that's awesome. I am glad you feel that way, but I just try to keep it real for you guys. So let me know in the comments section down below how we feeling about my list. Do you think I missed anything? Were, were there any sort of, you know, games or incidences in the, the video game? industry? I guess I could have talked about Keeley and the Keeley Awards. You know, I'm surprised that that didn't make my list because it's very self-serving. But hey, you know what? It, it didn't make the cut. I felt a little bit stronger about these things than I did about the Keeley Awards. But let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. There's a link in the description box down below. Protect yourself online so you don't end up like Insomniac. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.